Talk. Hi. <laughs> Greetings. Welcome to Knock Knock High with the Glockenfleckens. You've had your coffee this morning. Ooh, I guess it's I not did. morning anymore. I but... did. That's okay. I've had two cups. Mm-hmm, I can I'm tell. I'm raring to go. <laughs> I'm Dr. Glockenflecken. I'm Flannery. Oh, I'm Lady Glockenflecken, Kristen Flannery. That's who we are. We're ready to talk with you all. What was in your coffee? It is skin day. <laughs> We're talking skin. Yes, we are. We're we have d- I'm just so excited. A fantastic dermatologist so excited. guest today. We have Dr. We have the one and only Dr. Pimple Popper. That's right, Dr. Sandra Lee. Dr. Sandra Lee, board certified dermatologist known by all as Dr. Pimple Popper. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we 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 get into some really Really fascinating discussion just about, yeah. uh, I, I, was, I was like, I, I'm so glad I got to hear about like the community of people that, yeah. how she found them. Right. Uh, the, the, the people out there, all of you out there listening that just like popping things on your no, skin. But they like to watch other people. Right, right. Not popping it yourself. Right. Watching other people get theirs popped. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to shame anybody. People are... All sorts of ways, and I don't know, I think people's differences are very interesting. But I personally have a very hard time understanding the appeal of watching that. So, I don't know. People have to tell us in the comments, if they're one of those people that enjoys it, please do share what you you get out of it. Have you never popped your own thing? I I don't. Time or two? It's gross. Once or twice? No? I don't. I mean, probably. (laughs) I don't know. I... If well, I have, you, I've scrubbed it from my memory because it was disgusting. You take very good care of your skin. Yes. You've yeah. got you've got all the products you do. Yeah. It's like a whole... I have a whole routine. I've whole got a morning routine. routine. I've got an evening routine. I've got a an after shower routine. I've got an in the shower routine. I mean, you got to you gotta take good care of your skin. I, I don't have a routine. You don't have any of that. I... I uh I splash my face my wa- my face <laughs> I splash my face with water uh and then it, I, it it's nice it's refreshing mm. then I go to bed. <laughs> yeah, that's about all you do. But you it's know, I have very fair skin. Like my genetic heritage is right. Norwegian, so I grew up in you know Central Texas. There was a lot of sun, so I feel like. I did a lot of accidental damage as a child, and yep. so now I need to do what I can. Well, you can certainly tell the difference between the two of us, um, even though we're uh, basically, actually, Kristen is one year older than me, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, as far as appearance, I am like a 56-year-old man, so... Well, you know, also, you, uh, you've died one more time than I have. Do I get a little bit of I a feel break? Like, I feel like that probably yeah. ages you to die yeah, and then come I, back. Can I get a little... Uh, yeah, yeah shout, I think that helps. Shout out Sudden Cardiac Awareness Month. Yes, yeah, speaking of dying, <laughs> October is Sudden Cardiac Arrest Awareness Month. So be aware. Yeah, no. be, be aware, <laughs> aware, be aware of it. Be aware of it. Get, get it's a, a spooky get, thing. Get, get, sp- <laughs> get certified in CPR. Yes, Learn get certified CPR. in CPR. Um, know where your nearest AED is. I really, it would have been a lot easier for me had we had an AED in our home or near our home, uh, when you had your cardiac arrest. And also, you know, there's some new, this is actually something I'm very proud of. I've been involved in, you know, some, some new resources that exist out in the world for people who have, um, been affected by cardiac arrest. So whether they are survivors, co-survivors, uh, whether they responded to a cardiac arrest, um, if they are bereaved, someone that they love, you know, they, they lost them to cardiac arrest. Um, there's some new resources out there. So check those out. Those are, um, you know, it's not an ad or anything. I just really, it's what I set out to do, I think, with my platform after your cardiac arrest was to to try to make it so that other people would have an easier time than I did. Um, there was no information. There was no terminology for someone like me. There was, you know, it was it was really difficult. And so I have tried to do what I can to um, raise awareness of this idea of co-survivors, right, that it happens to the, to the loved ones too. I have tried to raise awareness that responding to, to cardiac arrest can be... Um, you know, a traumatic thing where people might need some some help. So 
um, check those out. There's there's a few things out there. Um, one that I've most recently been involved with is called Heart Sight. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Good stuff. everybody, check take it out. a look. Absolutely. I have a confession to make, though. You were in. Uh, this is not about cardiac arrest, but you were in. It's about um, skin. No. Okay. It's, it's you were not home last night because you were traveling. Yep. And um, you know when when you're solo parenting, there's just more things you got to keep track of, and you got to do all the things that two people usually do. So I was just doing that, and I just kind of lost track, and I didn't realize it until this morning. But um, I did. Sleep in my contacts again. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. I did. I knew you'd be upset, so I have to tell you publicly so that it will mitigate your response. You slept in your contacts. Yeah, I did. Do you have any idea what what could have happened? Um, pseudomonas. D- yes, pseudomonas, <laughs> acanthamoeba, staph aureus. <laughs> Streptococcus, uh, what else? Uh, any it number could have of, gotten stuck. Any number of fungal infections. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I, I played it fast and loose, and I'm, I think I'm okay. It all everybody, worked out. Everybody listening, please don't, don't do what Kristen just did. That's, it's, uh, Very shameful. It's, um, I'd like to make a public apology. Thank you. That's, I think that people would appreciate that. I think that's that's exactly to anyone what anyone I've need offended. <laughs> I did sleep in my contacts, and All I right. will well, strive never to do it again. But I can't make any promises. I probably will. All right. Well, I forgive you. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about let's talk about skin. Should we yeah. get to Doctor Sandra Lee? Let's do it. All right. Here's Doctor Lee. Do you want to tell them, or should I? You can. All right. We're telling our amazing story live in person. Oh, you mean the story where you died? Uh, No, the one where you survived me dying. Oh, yeah, right. We can't wait. We're going to be a meet and greet before each show. Uh, You can get a photo with us. You can meet us. We want to meet you December 9th, 10th, and 11th in Southern California. We'll be at the Improv in Irvine, Ontario, and Oxnard. To buy tickets and check out the dates, go to glockenflecken.com slash live. And we have a special offer for our Patreon members, the Glock Flock, free meet and greet with a normal ticket. Just tell us your username and you're in. See you in Southern California. All right, we are so thrilled to have Dr. Sandra Lee, Dr. Pimple Popper, MD, here to join us today. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is really this... lovely. Oh, it's it's, it's so great. Nice We've time. already, uh, w- as soon as you got on the, the, the call here, we already established that our names are not actually Glockenflecken, and your last name is not actually like Pimple Popper, so that's yes. that's good. I think mine is more uh, more understandable. Yours, I had no idea. I thought that that was your name, and I have a hard time spelling it when I'm trying to search for the emails. <laughs> I'm like, what is the? Because I think I keep thinking glaucoma, because yeah. you know yeah. you get that right, probably. Oh yes, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I have patients call the office asking to make an appointment with Doctor Glockenflecken. Yes, yes. So that's right. It's it, it it gets to be a problem, but. Um, I, I want to start just by your 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 story is fascinating, like how you got to this point right here. So I guess my first question for you: At what point did you know that there was an entire community of people interested <laughs> in uh, bursting lesions on the skin? Like, how, like what? Help me out here. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> You know what they say about hindsight when you look back and you go, oh, I should have seen the signs, you know, (laughs) like I should have seen the signs. There are there are times where I think back at certain instances and realize, wow, I should have noticed it then. But, yeah, I didn't notice it really until I started to post uh, uh, blackhead extractions or pimple popping on social media. And then strangers would just be excited about it and be tagging their friends. And then I thought, wow, this is, that, that's a crazy thing. I guess I would say where it cemented it was when that brought me down the path on the internet of discovering that there was a subreddit that was just on oh, called okay. popping. And it was just tens of thousands of people that were sharing popping videos with each other. That's when I realized, wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is a thing. And then when you would see their comments and how they were talking about this, you'd be like, wow, this is like, this is something. Well, it, and, and obviously there is, there is a, a place for a, a board certified dermatologist to come in and actually like provide the education <laughs> surrounding these things. Like when should you be actually, is it a good thing for people to be on their own popping things or is that yes, best left it, to the professionals? Right. It, I mean, it, it is not, I mean, you know what my answer is going to be. It's not something <laughs> that you should, that you should be doing. Right. Um, but in a way it's like, I think when they watch these videos it, it, to many people, there's a, there's a mix of people. There are people who don't, can't stand to pop their own pimples, but they like to watch, watch it. And then there's people that, you know, but I think, I think that people who like it, they also like to yeah. watch it. There's a comforting feeling, which is a crazy thing. That's you know? my question. I have a really hard time with popping. And now he's whatnot. a, you're an eye doctor, correct? He I is. Do yes. you have a problem with the eyes? Cause I have people that have a lot yeah. of problems with dealing with the eyes. You oh know? yeah. Right. It's yes. a thing for sure. Yeah. I th yeah, we've talked about on here before that every doctor has like a body fluid that they can't handle. And yes. so that's how they know they're not going to go that direction. Right. And I'm not a doctor, but this is definitely this is probably one of my most difficult oh, really? body fluids. More so than like more so <laughs> than like I like if somebody's working a surgery in the eye, you can't watch. You can watch that. I wouldn't watch that either. Okay, it's like that. It's like surgeries <laughs> then and things like yeah. that in general. But yes. it's different, right? Like, like to the eye surgery, I it makes me want to like grab my eyes. Like it seems painful. To for the for the pimple popping, it makes me worried. I'll vomit. Oh like, yes, it's that just a different good, yes. system, I guess. So I, so I'm having trouble understanding what people like about. I'm noticing a theme. I don't understand what people like about horror movies. I don't like I don't horror know. movies. I can't watch scary movies at all. I don't like roller coasters. Personally, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't mind it because there, I mean, there's there's a lot of skin stuff that comes up around the eye, and so I end up seeing a lot of you know eyelid, yeah. you know, yeah. Chalazian and, and Mil things like that. and milia exactly, and things yeah. Like that, yeah. And so but you are a professional. Oh no, I know, I know. And so these are people like in their homes on the internet watching. <laughs> Yes. other people and they do like, it at, uh, while they're eating potato chips or i can't or, and they're and they're doing it to relax <laughs> they're actually doing it to help them fall asleep uh oh, really yes oh, wow. it's like very that comforting for people i notice it happens a lot in people who have a very stressful job where they deal with people like policemen firemen nurses um tattoo people people that deal with skin and maybe seeing disruptions in it and and sort of dealing with uh yeah. and i think that when you watch somebody else do it in a way it like relieves stress kind of i think because it's not you and you know that usually i mean all my stories have a happy ending in general like they're mm -hmm. not gonna like yeah. end with something like and then this person you know, dies or something like that. It's not like that. Right. Like, you right. know, that this is cancer and this is like, you know, it's a happy ending, you know, it's going to be gone and everything's going to be back in place. And I think that that helps them deal with their stressful jobs, which is very interesting. Yeah. There's something metaphorical there about, you know, they have a lot of built up stress maybe from their job. And so yeah. watching something, you know, Burst. explode <laughs> kind of helps them. <laughs> I don't know. What Was it a... Well, uh, needless to say, uh, Kristen probably has not seen as much of your content uh -huh. as I have. I'm yes. sure it's really wonderful. I, it's, That's it's I know fantastic. so many people love it. I just can't handle it. I get it. No, I get it. And in fact, <laughs> people watch the television show and they will watch it, but they don't watch the go like the gory parts. They'll like turn yeah. away yeah. for those parts, but they like yeah. the storyline and things like well, that. So. What I really like about it is just the the variety. You know, you're, yeah. You're, you're, yeah, it's called pimple pop. But obviously, there's m so much more to that. The breadth of of skin first of all, I had things. Yes. Yeah. Even as a physician, yeah. like I had no idea that skin could do that many things. Yeah. Like it's it's it, it's, it's fascinating. Outrageous. I think it's really nice that we get to bring that to that. We're not just about pimples. We're not just acne and warts yeah. and rashes. There's so much more. Right. Yeah. But I'm sure the same what with you. It? Like, how many things can happen to the eye? <laughs> like, yeah. what, what's how going on there? How can there be six there? specialties yes. within not only, ophthalmology? Yeah, not only that, but there are. Like, we have seven subspecialties. Last time I checked, there may yeah. be more. I don't know. But, yeah, we even... 
that's just a feature of medicine nowadays that you subspecialize in so many different things. Probably to some extent similar in dermatology, but yeah, uh, it's it's I don't know. I, I mean, it uh, it does feel weird to go through medical training and just devote your career to the, uh, like a two centimeter. Uh, yes. you know, organ, but it, it is what it is. Yeah. It's know. also an organ that's like not typically thought of by a lay person as medicine related, right? Like it's like your teeth, the eye. The right? Eyes, you don't the get teeth, the right, skin. vision insurance is separate. Like I don't right. think about ophthalmologists when I think about medical doctors. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, no offense, yeah, that's okay. but it's just true. I, okay. Well, they, <laughs> people don't consider dermatologists too when they think about medical doctors as well. Yeah. yeah. So, so, did you consider other career paths before dermatology? Were you like 100% headset dermatology? That's what you wanted to do? Or um, how did you come to that? that career you know, choice? I wasn't even really headset uh, determined to become a physician. I, I, I think that it was just my father's a dermatologist and my mom is a nurse. So we were, they were in medicine. And I just think it was, I was sort of at this I was in college taking like the five year plan. And I kind of was like, what do we do next? You know, let me go, let me apply to medical school. I already knew I was good at sciences, math and sciences. And I just thought, I don't know. I was never like, oh, I must be a dermatologist. I must be this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think about the other things that I, I mean, I enjoy doing a lot of other things. And I think, uh, um, you know, I, I think I'm so happy and proud to be a dermatologist, but this wasn't really um, what I was planning on doing. I didn't have this goal early on. I don't know if that was something that you had interest in at a young age or how you no. happened upon it either, if it was the same, but it just happened. I, so, yeah, I, I knew I wanted to go to med school pretty early on, yeah. but I had no idea. It took me until really the final year of med school, yeah. you know, early on where I had to decide. And right. So similarly, like dermatology and ophthalmology are more special, uh, specialized within medicine that you don't have to take those rotations. So you may not know about them or how right. great they are um, when you're going through medical school. And I think I was lucky in the sense that I did have a dermatologist in my family. So I did know how yeah. great of a specialty it is. You know, my dad wasn't trying to, he didn't even push me to become a doctor. Uh, he, but he would, you know, I would see, or he would say, yes, dermatology is a great specialty to be in for this and that reason. And I think, uh, also when I heard how challenging it was to get into just like ophthalmology, it's very difficult to get that. Those are very highly coveted specialties mm -hmm. are very, um, uh, the, the competition is high. Then you, I sort of felt like, well, yeah, I want to try to do this then. Let me, you know, that kind of motivated me to see if I could get into the specialty. So yeah. I just think I was lucky in that sense that I knew about it. It was on my radar early on. I knew what a great specialty it, it, it is. I, I never seriously considered dermatology. I did do a two week dermatology elective mm -hmm. and I, I think in, you know, this is going to be great. It's, and it was, it was, the, the hours were fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I got to do like procedures and stuff. Yes. It's a very procedure oriented specialty. Um, but, uh, man, you got to memorize a lot of really boring things. I'm so sorry. It, it just, <laughs> like, like, so there's so many like chemicals that cause reactions to yes. things. And like, I, I, I was sitting in on the residents all like quizzing each other on just the minutia it was unbelievable. You guys don't have minutia though? You must have yeah, minutia. Yeah, I was going to say, think, you're one to okay, talk. All right, I don't all right. know. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I yes, mean, we get we to deal have... with like spider bites and like parasites. Yeah, and... like worms yeah, and eyeballs. Like, like, and like, we ugh. get like and we get to describe rashes in weird ways that people are like, I didn't like <laughs> I could describe a rash to somebody, um, a dermatologist, and they would know exactly what I'm talking about. I could say the same thing to you, and you're gonna say, That sounds like a maculopapular, maculopapular rash or something, rash. right? That's what everybody says. Everybody's a non-dermatologist, that's know. another specialty. That's how they describe it. And you're like, okay, that doesn't oh, mean I've, anything. I've certainly made fun of it in my in my yes. content for sure. Yeah. Uh I, I guess what I'm saying, I guess I think I just I'm just wasn't smart enough. There was there was too no, much. This, I don't there's too that. much skin, Dr. Lee. <laughs> yeah, that's just not your thing. That's a thing. You get, you right? got too it's much just of not it. your thing. I, I can't right. deal with it. All there over is a the lot body. of minutiae though. There's a lot of Latin words that you have to learn. There's a lot of textbooks. There's a lot of I mean, in a way it's like BS too, you know, because it's like, you know, um you, there's a way to invent so many different things. It's not BS, like in a negative way, but it's like there's a lot of different things you got to learn. And it's sort of like, I'm sure with you, 
there's so many things to learn, but that's why a residency is so important because to know all these things, you may not remember it offhand, but you have it sort of in this subconscious right. or in this world. You're like, oh, there is something I remember that when yes. you do this, like you do, like just we have such cool conditions, like you can get this uh, condition where it looks like you whip your back. Like it looks like somebody literally whipped Whoa. your back and somebody, and if that per person comes in with that condition, you could say, hmm, did you have a meal yesterday that had shiitake mushrooms in it? You know, and that See, ends up like, being- This is what I'm talking about. And then you're, you're like, like a wizard. That's unbelievable. Like, how did you know? Yeah. You're magic that you can do stuff well, like that. Well, you probably it's have amazing. something you ooze glitter no, from no, right, no. your if right I can't eye. See it, and that if, means if I, like- nope. If I can't see it, it doesn't it yeah. ever happen. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it. we do. No, we have some things, yeah. you know, like like Bartonella cat scratch type, type mm -hmm. things. You know, you can see these these weird things in the eye, but or Loa it does Loa seem with like the isn't that have the worm thing that grows? Yes. Now, eyes? fortunately, I've never seen uh, like an actual case of Loa Loa. Um, Kristen's just dying I, on the I inside. I have never been mo more I think sure of my decision to not go into medicine than well, I am those are so right rare. now. It is. It's at very that point, rare. It's cool. And as long as it doesn't move fast and jump, I mean, you're okay. It's not going to come get you, there you right? Go. As long well, as it doesn't jump, you're uh, fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are, like, I feel like once or twice a year, somebody comes into clinic to see me. They're convinced they have a worm. They're, they're absolutely convinced. Like, I saw it. It's in there. It's a most floater. Of, most of the time, it's not. But it just speaks to how, actually, yeah, probably, like, What's every single called? time it's not. What's that diagnosis it, called for you? Um... Their name for that because we have worms. Not, not like where you th where you're just you think you have a something and you're we convinced. have one. I, it's I don't know. I think it's just anxiety about. See, this about is the thing. We worms. name things. You guys don't name things. That's why you don't have that much. <laughs> That's called delusions of parasitosis. When people oh, come in and they believe have, like, they have in your bugs skin. on oh, their skin. That's it must be the same thing though. Can I Probably. can I can I take that? Yeah, can I start yeah. using that? Yeah. Oh, oh well, oh, you wonderful. should call it deluge delusions or like after Lee, yeah. you have to call it, you have to change it a little bit but like uh, uh it is yeah. uh when you have uh delusions you have true delusions and you oh, wow. we get you get something called the matchbook sign and back in the day people don't carry matchbooks anymore now it's like a ziploc bag sign but you bring in like a a matchbook they would like back when i was in training mm -hmm. you'd say it's a matchbook because they'd bring in little pieces of fuzz like from somewhere and they would say insist that these are bugs that they pulled off of their skin and it's very tough to actually convince people to get treatment because usually it's a if now they can google things and they can see that that's an anti-psychotic medication so they're like oh, well gotcha. why are you giving me this medication kind of thing you know well, in, right. on, in in my world, it's usually I just have to reassure them. Like I don't, it, it's usually not to that point where it's it's right. causing major I problems. See. But it's really fun though to be able to say it, reassure people. No, you do not have worms in your eyes, and they're very relieved. So that's that's oh, that's interesting. That's a, that's Some a good, of my floaters look like worms. Yeah. Yeah, I can see do. how they if you didn't know what worms, floaters yes. were, yeah, yes, that's true. That you might think it's. A I worm. would say for us, we get it more to a severe degree that like they're usually insistent and they get they can get angry with you, like if you tell mm -hmm. them they're not um, that right. they're not indeed. Uh, so there's our our favorite patients, but they are within the realm of dermatology. Yeah. Well, you know, there is a lot of overlap. Obviously, we've we've yeah. we've been comparing like skin and eyes. There, there, there is like some. In fact, I've I've known there there have been, there are practices out there that actually do combine the two. I believe like there are like, hmm. like they like right ad the adjacent eyelids? to each other. I don't know. There, there is. There's like I feel like we sh we share some patients sometimes. And well, you know the Carruthers. Do you know who the Carruthers are? Like up in Canada, Toronto. They are actually a husband and wife dermatologist and ophthalmologist team, and they essentially discovered Botox and the treatment for wrinkles. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's right. So actually, that's ophthalmologists do. They we claim Botox. You know. No. 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 Yeah. No. Yeah. No, it's no, we do. We do. No. I don't ah. know. You know, I mean, the, this the is first... ultimately a marital oh, argument, which is why it's so tricky. Test. We should put it to a test on the social media. Let's see who's got claim. We'll do I a think. poll. Yes. Okay. Do you know? Do you know the the first clinical 
use of Botox was was for strabismus. Uh, I would, uh, yeah, I would think it was for the like, is that that's the eye that's itself? The, but I thought it was like the twitching, maybe like you know when you'll get that. Uh, I don't know what well, it's it was, called. It was so. the, the eye muscles. It was uh, treating yeah. treating I the eye. I strabismus was the eye when your eye does this. Is that not right? No, no it's so, just yeah, a I'm misalignment saying. to the oh, eyes. Okay. Like yeah, so okay. it, it's just a misalignment. So you have like one eye going out or oh, going okay. in, and and Botox was used to do that. So. Uh, yeah, we could put it. Uh, we'll we'll ask uh, both of our audiences, like who right. who who owns. I think at this point, probably. Have you drilled yeah, it into Yeah, I think the general listeners? public. Okay. Um, yeah, you thinks you of concede. Botox as okay. a dermatological okay. intervention. Yeah, you you you, <laughs> you certainly in your daily life probably use it a lot more than I do. But um, you know, I don't know. It's okay. I'll yeah. give it to you. You should have taken it. Nystagmus. Yes, nystagmus. Oh, that's what, that's oh, you're, what it oh, was. You're thinking of nystagmus. Look at me go. I don't know why I just raised the that's, roof. That was like 1995 coming out. Well, because I said Matchbox. <laughs> That, that's yeah. that's I'm impressed. Yeah. Well, when she said it, I was like, oh, I used to remember what or I used to know what that is called, but I can't remember anymore. I've, I've I just never, popped right in. I, that's not even a word I say when I'm on call and you're overhearing me talking. About I know. Well, stuff. you know why I know it? Because I can do it on command. Actually, you know what? If I if I ever well, let me let's come back to that. OK, <laughs> put a pin in that. <laughs> but if I am ever on call and I use the word nystagmus, you know, I'm having a bad time on call. Oh. So, because nystagmus is hard to figure bless out. Bless you, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that So yeah, you're nystagmus on command. Yeah. yeah. It's gotten harder. Did you as notice I've gotten how we older, purposely but... said it again because he we say we say it wrong? <laughs> Did you notice that he's like nystagmus? Oh, no. I say nystagmus. nystagmus. I say nystagmus. Oh, oh. nystagmus. I think I don't think there's a right or a wrong way. I don't know. The word you just pretty in general much scares the mill, me. Just pretty much declared Ni it's nystagmus. <laughs> Ni okay. Nystagmus. I, I say nystagmus, but I, I do say some words kind of funny. I mean, oh. for God's sake, I glockenflecken. Like no one knows that yeah. word. So. Well, well, how did that come about? You have you already told this story, Paul? Um, I, I was I was bored at a conference. Um, this was back in 2016. It was a like a vision research conference, and I. I have a had a stand up comedy background. I was like, I'm just gonna tell some jokes on social media. Because he had to go to the conference because he was a resident, so it was like a requirement. Well, I but had he's to. Not it was like a little vacation. Research. I'm sure he was very oh, excited though about it. Oh god. Yes. Yeah, so it was it was painful, yeah. a painful conference. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I was like, uh, I'm gonna start this social media comedy, you know, channel. Uh, what am I gonna call myself? And I was I thought of the most the silliest word I could think of in ophthalmology and. So Glock and Fleck, it's an actual thing. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. It is. It, what yeah. is it? I, I, you don't. You really don't want to. Oh, know. I don't want to. It's, <laughs> it's very. Um, is, it, is it a bad word? Oh, okay. no, it's not. It has no, something to really, do. With, it was probably it's named boring. after a real the Glock and Flecken, probably. Well, like, right. Maybe that's why you thought it was a last name because yes. maybe it really was someone's last name. Well, I yeah. feel bad about about whoever the real Doctor yes, Glock and Flecken was back in. You've elevated it. Come on. Because I'm pretty sure now, if you if you Google that word, trying to come up with right. like actual examples of glaucomflecken in the eye, oh, instead you get like me dressed you. up as a pediatrician. Yes. Yes. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we did get tagged. I don't know if you know this. We got tagged on social media by somebody who had a printout. I assume it was like a like an after visit summary or something, and it it uh -huh. mentioned well. glaucomflecken oh, on yeah. it, and they tagged us. Oh, there you go. So, so well, there you go. Cute. One in the that's real cool. world. What about your name, Doctor Pimple Popper? I mean, that's it's that's a it's fantastic, right? It catches you. Right. It catches your attention. <laughs> yes. Did easier you to did spell. you? Yes. It's easier to spell. <laughs> did you have other options you were thinking about this? Um, the... I wasn't really thinking when that happened. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> It was sort of, it was just a, um, it really came down to that going back to Reddit and not knowing what Reddit was at that point, but deciding, oh, this is the thing. There's a whole group of people here that likes this stuff. Let me post there. And I signing up for it and then realizing, noticing that nobody used their name. So I had to think of a name. So that's yeah. what I thought of. That was essentially oh, that's it. Great. Yes. That, that, that's how that came about. Do what is your opinion of social media these days? Um, what is my that is a heavy Are, do question you, do Let me you think. enjoy it Are you is it um, is it is it kind of a job now to you is yeah it... it becomes a job certainly and i knew yeah. that was going to happen and anticipate yeah. that coming but it comes in fits in waves i think you know like it, like you you get surges of enjoying it and then you get mm -hmm. surges of getting tired of it because it just happens to be how close is it to becoming a job versus how close right. are you doing it to just like 
you know, pull that handle on the slot machine and waiting for mm -hmm. it to pay off kind of thing. That's what you like about it, right? That feeling, that rush that you get of, of yeah. something kind of getting popular and something kind of getting big. And that is like the fun part about it. But then there's also a, a work part about it. And there's other kinds of issues that come along, people trying to tell you what to do or tell you what you can post or not post or, you know, and certainly the trolls, you know, I've been very lucky, I think, for most of my career on social media, um, really being able to avoid a lot of um, negative comments and trolls. And I think it was initially because people were just so happy to have people that were like them. And they realized, you know, and they were like, just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is a thing. And there's other people like me and I'm not crazy. I don't need to, you know, I don't yeah. know when they, they don't need to commit me for loving this stuff. And I think <laughs> um, that was the thing. And I think also there's certain, certainly positivity, people supporting others, you know, yeah. because they might look different or they might be different. Uh, but uh, so we really have avoided that overall. And I think it's also how we, we don't really address, we don't, I, I try not to make fun of pe things or like it or answer those trolls or so I think we, it helps us to avoid a lot of that. But that can well, be so a bummer too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. You know, it's it's there's good things and bad things about right. it, right? But it, we're so lucky, end, it, right? We it is so a big lucky. part of our journey and like where we are right now in our lives, yes, right? right? And and well, and it's a it's a fun creative outlet. Sometimes I think that's when mm -hmm. it's at its best is when is when you're able to be creative with it and just you're having fun and and it can yeah. be just kind of like a hobby and I think it's less fun because of the pace that you're expected to keep on social right. media right of having to post something every day or all the time however often and it, sometimes you just don't have that creative juice flowing you yeah. know but you feel like you can't just wait until it comes back you have to keep posting so that I think is where it starts to feel more like a job yeah. it seems like Dr. Lee, for you, like you have an endless uh, amount of content out there. Like there's there's always somebody that's going to need something popped <laughs> or cut open or yes. removed. And so I want to uh, talk about your practice because I, I am I am also in private practice and know how hectic that can be when there's not like a camera crew. I'm not like filming a show. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have been dying to ask you just like, how did you combine that into your practice? You mean you know, a tel a this, or filming the just show. social media? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, well, I mean, for the so filming social media, well, so it's so filming social media is a little different than obviously filming a, a, a television show. I ha was very hesitant on switching to television show, really, when they were coming to, mm. when they, they were essentially pursuing me. And I was like, uh, I mean, I wasn't that, I was, obviously my interest was peaked. I was like, oh, this is a cool thing. I mean, I mean mm -hmm. like, what's going on here? But then also I wasn't like jumping at it because, you know, why doing that, you're losing some control here. You know, you're, you're losing control of your content and being able to put out what you want to put out. Um, and, uh, I've always been very protective of my patients. I don't think you put up patients, right? You don't do, you do more. Yeah. You do I more, you're fully yeah. creative content on your own. Right. Um, yeah. so for me, it was all about my patients and sort of anonymous and respecting them, but really showing what we do as dermatologists and getting that little kick, mm -hmm. that endorphin kick, I guess from, from watching these sort of videos. So that was, it was a big, you know, I thought ultimately like, why don't I try? I mean, who else is, you know, who, when would I ever get this opportunity and what, you know, let, why don't we see what happens here? So there was a risk I was taking in doing that. Um, and, uh, it was, it was fantastic. It was wonderfully successful. You know, it was a really big, it was a big hit on, uh, TLC and on television and it created, a. It, it does create another monster, just like with social media and reposting. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress, you know, and you are not your own boss. And that makes it difficult and complicated. Um, and it's, uh, but it, overall, obviously, it's been a wonderful experience. I mean, yeah. I think uh, it, I, I'm very proud of how it's showcased dermatology. And I'm really proud of the work that we've done there. And I just think there was a lot of like, stars aligning along the way that allowed me to do this. Um, 
uh, you know, well, just... I think it's a it's a great example of just how how we can combine medical education, you know, with entertainment mm-hmm. because it that can be done very well and it can be done in a way that's not so good that mm-hmm. does um, kind of poke fun at the expense of the wrong things, right? Right. right. May um, I ask you how long in practice were you in before you um, started to get on social media like this? Well, I started in residency. I was a novice. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, because I was like, oh, I'm telling jokes. I don't want to yes, get yes. fired. Yes, got it. <laughs> I got a lot of student loans I got to pay back. That's right. um, <laughs> and then once I got into private practice, I started feeling more comfortable with what I was saying on social media, realizing. Well, yeah, you found your groove a little bit yeah. of, you know, what to stay away from and what is okay. Yeah, and then and then I tapped in. Once the pandemic hit, you know, I started making videos. Uh, okay. uh, and I, I tapped into the interpersonal conflicts between different specialties mm-hmm. and i at this point i i don't even touch on actual patient you know e- either you know cases or or anything like yeah. that it's there's so much material for me just in the healthcare system that yes. i can i can hit on that that's that's my bread and butter there so yeah it's interesting how but, we do only do, we do very different things even though we're both right. medical specialties very different things within yeah within how does this. that work when you incorporate patients into it like what is the I mean, I assume they're all consenting to be mm-hmm. filmed and all of those things. What is the kind of process for when you do include your patients in your content? Um, I, I mean, I think that they are the content for me, like, right? They are the, they're whatever growth they have, whatever uh, condition that they have, they are the content. And that's what makes it entertaining and educational. And I think that uh, even in the very, very beginning, we established and this is why people don't really say no to you know the uh, having them be posted is because they know that i'm not trying to exploit them i have no intention of doing that i try to protect them in every way it's very anonymous you know you try i try not to show their face i mean the only places you really see who they are are people for very rare instances on the internet on social, my social media, but also but the television show. That's the only time where you actually okay. see who that person is and follow their life. But uh, it, it's all about really just the condition and explaining it and how I treat my patients, I think. Um, uh, it, it really drove the business as, as a dermatologist because people would come from far away even just to, just because they felt they know me and they trusted me because they knew uh, what the whole how what what was going to happen when they came to see me it was going to be exactly like this really, so um, so yeah I think it's just I think they felt very protective and I've always been very protective of them and that was my main worry with doing a, a television show is that that it wasn't going to be uh, that I, I wouldn't have that control here's Paquito this is one of my kitty cats he's saying hello oh. sorry about that and yes I do have giant scalpels behind me. If you hadn't noticed that, sorry about that too. Yeah. Oh, I was, uh, yes. I was, I was going to ask about yeah. that in your background here. They are giant. giant looks, I also have a giant like comedone prop. extractor. Yes. I have a giant Man. comedone extractor over here somewhere on the other corner too. God, I could absolutely use one of those in my skits. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. you'll, you'll have to let that me know. That one's sharp. How... People have cut their finger on that oh. one. Oh, that no. one's like super sharp. And my comedone extractor is actually a, um, we call it a pop ski. Cause it's not, it's, yeah. you can do shots with it. Like it's like a, instead of a shot ski, have you ever seen like a right. ski? Uh, but yeah. It's like mm-hmm. a giant pop ski. So that's funny. Can I, I actually I have one more question before we take a quick break here is, um, have you either in training or any, you know, opened something up and it got all over you? Does that, does that oh, happen? Or, or are you, you, are you good enough now that you can Could've anticipate that the, the trajectory yeah. of During the discharge the- that <laughs> it's not going to get uh, you? Yeah, we've had things hit the ceiling. We've had things hit the wall behind us. Uh, I've definitely hit someone's arm. We've definitely, uh, you know, yes, that's where we wear splash masks, you know, as long there as I go. wear something. Yeah. I don't, if I, if this had happened before I had constructed our office, I would have probably had a shower installed or something like that, you know, because immediately if something happens and it gets on you, you do want to take a shower. It's like, you feel like it's physically acid on you. You are aware of it. It's just yeah. like if a bird flew over and dropped something on you, you like, ah, oh, you, you got to clean up that. immediately. Yes. Right. You Absolutely. want that off of you. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with Dr. Lee. Uh, hey, Kristen, what do you got there? Oh, this 
Oh, well, you may not know this as an ophthalmologist, but uh, this is called a stethoscope. Yeah, I know what a stethoscope is. I also know it's supposed to go in your ears and not sitting on top of your headphones. No, I like it better this way. Besides, this is not just any stethoscope. Mm. This is the Echo Core 500 digital stethoscope ah. with three lead ECG. I've heard about these things. Yeah. 40 times noise amplification, That's right. noise cancellation, mm -hmm. three audio filter modes, you know it. and a full color display. Yeah, buddy. 60 hours of battery life, too. That's right. Everybody loves a good battery life, and it's durable. That's right. Awesome. We have a special offer for our audience here in the U.S. Learn more at echohealth.com slash KKH. That's ekohealth.com slash KKH and use code NOCK50 for a 75-day risk-free trial and a free case and free shipping to the continental U.S. to get your core 500 stethoscope. Hey, Kristen, have you ever heard of eyelid mites? I try not to they think look about like this. So. Gosh, Look get this. your bouquet of eyelid mites out of my face. Look at these little cute eyelid mites. They're not usually this big. Thank goodness. But you know what they do? What? They cause itchy, red, irritated eyelids. Mm, I don't want that. A lot of people that. don't know that it's actually sometimes demodex mites. That's horrifying. Yeah, they cause demodex blepharitis. But don't get freaked out, Kristen. Get checked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To find more information, go to eyelidcheck.com. Again, that's E-Y-E-L-I-D check. Dot com to get more information about Demodex blepharitis. All right, we are back with uh, Dr. Sandra Lee. Uh, so, Dr. Lee, uh, you know, I, tr I try to play a, like a fun game with each guest, and I think this will maybe help people get to know you a little bit better. Probably okay. us too. Uh, we're just gonna play Desert Island. That, that's okay. that's it. So, so five things. Five. five things, five things that you would bring on a deserted island, except they for you, they can't. It can't be sunscreen. Okay. You are not allowed to bring sunscreen. All right. <laughs> so I would, I would give you five. Let's say, let's let's make them um, uh, medic medically themed things. Five things that you would bring with you. Five things that I would bring with me to be able to survive on a deserted desert island, a deserted yes. island, sorry. And yes. uh, um, that, okay. So. And there's I no mean, shade yeah, on this island. That, right. So that's an important distinction. It's deserted, but is it I mean, also a desert? I would, yeah. I mean, I would bring like some kind of water purifier. I mean, I'm going to think of things like to be able to survive. I would yeah. bring sort of some sort of water purifier purifier probably an easy up you know something like that that's gonna okay. easy up that's gonna be some shade or something for me yeah, um, yeah. Nice. Nice shade. Shelter. i'll probably br you know, bring a great assistant that can help me to gather wood and to gather smart. Uh, <laughs> to bring gather. Your, oh i never thought about that that wasn't on my yes. list a uh, person to do all the chores yeah, for yeah. you. Yeah, to help me out there. You bring your desert island well, you're your easy yeah, I don't have to talk to my hand the whole time or something like that. I got something to talk <laughs> Wait, to. Wait, do you have a scribe? Do you work with a scribe, a medical scribe? Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, Kinda. I've actually had paper charts mo most of my life until just like a couple of years ago. Oh, and it's wow. been okay. very, very hard for me to <laughs> adjust. I am like the old lady now that like I can't. What did you, I don't can you tell us what, what system you moved to? We're at with Emma. Emma. EMA. Okay. I guess. Oh, is it electronic medical? I don't know. Mod med? Like off, is that like off brand Epic? I think it's I the competition. Know. Epic and Emma oh, are yeah. the are okay. the are the two. Um, maybe gotcha. the main dermatology uh, oh, medical it's records. Dermatology yeah. Thing. yeah. Um, gotcha. Uh, though they are going uh, to regular to medicine as well. So, um, so because um, you know, well, that's a whole other subject. That's so, so <laughs> things that you guys discuss. But uh, what else would I bring? Um, yes, yeah, so you got a, a water purifier, a shade tent, an assistant. And it's just shaping up pretty well, right, I gotta say. Like, You're doing this right. Yeah, I, so I mean, too. I'd bring like, I don't know, various uh, collections of seeds and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'd bring like a, a goat or something, like to like, okay. right? Yeah, water purifier, shade tin, assistant, seeds, and a goat. I yeah, love it. It's great. Something. Yeah. Well done. You think something a lot like right, I do, just right. the practicalities. I, like mean, totally I bet you're a good emergency yes. prepper. Yeah, I do, I do think people yeah, would maybe. probably be interested, though, because I said you couldn't bring sunscreen. 
Um, what? But people are probably going to be upset if I don't ask you like what your favorite sunscreen is. Oh, oh well, I mean, my own sunscreen for my own skincare line, I would say. I mean, well, we have well, a really great go. sunscreen, SLMD Skincare. Yes, but I mean, Fantastic. what great type of ingredient in a sunscreen? My favorite thing are probably yeah. physical sunscreens. You know, there's two different types: mm -hmm. physical versus chemical. And I think physical oh, okay. is more like a barrier, like back in the day where they put like this, the white oh, on yeah, the yeah. nose, right? Zinc. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. She, she, she knows a lot about dermatology, even though she can't handle the pimple popping. <laughs> she yeah. is, she's all, nice all about stagnus. the skincare. Yeah. <laughs> she's, all, she's, got all, she's all about the skincare oh, stuff. Yeah. She's, she's on top of it uh, much better than me. Um, but, you know. That's I, the difference we went between to, it. Yeah. We visited, yeah. we visited Australia for the first time. Oh. And I don't know if you've been to that part of the world but they drill it into their their population early, early on. Right. Was it slip? Uh, yeah. Slip, slap, slop. Yep. That's something. it. Uh, slip, something slap, like that. I think that's it. Yeah. Slip, slap, slop. Well, they, there's, there's two a lot more that more they added. People that are prone to uh, yeah. that that lo a lighter complexion is really prone to skin cancer and things like yeah. that. Well, so. and I even noticed like when we were there, we had sunscreen on and hats and we were being really careful about it because we are very fair. And uh, at the end of the day, you remember it just, you just felt irradiated. You know, you felt really? like you had a sunburn, sun, yeah. even when you Maybe didn't. Maybe we're close to the equator so or something. Intense. Right. I Where think they have like guys, a. By the way, what part of the Portland. country? Portland. Oh, Portland. Portland yeah, Oregon. Pacific yes, Northwest. Yes, got it. Yeah. yeah you a little get different rain climate. And, yes. <laughs> this suits our skin better. Yeah. Well, my Desert Island five things, uh, I wasn't allowed. Wait, yeah, what? You can't bring. Sunscreen. Oh, no. no. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, sunglasses. Oh. I can't yeah, bring you sun can't bring sunglasses. You can't sunglasses. bring eye drops because your eyes are going to get dried up out there in the desert, <laughs> deserted well, island. Well, that wasn't, that wasn't a stipulation. Okay. In fact, I will be bringing five different types of eye drops. <laughs> okay. Those are your five things. <laughs> I, don't th I don't know if I will survive very long. Uh, you're much smarter about it than I, than I would be. And Kristen, you weren't allowed to bring podcasts. Hmm. So, so do you guys get I, what? I want to hear your answers. <laughs> what else are you going to bring? Well, me? She... Would you bring me? No, we're on different deserted islands. You're already. Oh, that's true. Good. It was a good I run, island. but yeah. now we're done. <laughs> uh, I would bring my emergency go bag. Yeah, that's true. Oh, the... yeah. that has everything you need in it. It's got it all. It's just one bag. It. Okay. Yeah. I would... It's got the purifiers. I would bring my house with all the stuff in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Kristen is like like maybe two steps below yeah. a doomsday prepper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? that's fair. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have anxiety and it manifests itself. Do you have like a bunker? Almost. No, bunker. I'm not okay. that bad. But that's I... the step that she has not <laughs> oh, okay, gone to okay. yet. <laughs> we're, we're not at bunker level uh, doomsday prepping. But yet. I do think through we've got like fire supplies. We've got earthquake supplies. We got I mean, all the things. All our all our uh, sensitive documents in a fireproof, oh, waterproof not, bag. Right, right. Yes. Right. But you know what? I'm not wrong. You did die. In your she, sleep. I did. I did have and a little issue And I could have used an AED. There. Yeah. So. Do you have an true. AED? We do now. Wow. I, I had a cardiac arrest back <laughs> in like 2020. I could have used it at that oh. time. But. Oh, you yourself so, did. I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh my did. gosh. How scary. I okay. Did. That would be a reason yeah. to have an AED. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. prepared. I, you sorry. want me I, around. I do. I make fun, of, I make fun of you for it, but it's, it's a. Uh, I'm glad she's that gonna I sit, have you. She, she, she's gonna she's already this, done it once. Yeah, you're going to take her on the deserted island. Is <laughs> that's what it is. Right. That's what you should do. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, you'll just weigh me down. Extra baggage. I got to keep I, this exactly, guy alive. A child you got to take care <laughs> yeah. of at the same time. Yeah. Right. You got to feed him and stuff. <laughs> that's right. He's big. He eats a yes. lot. That's true. Um, one one more question. So you, I think I heard someone mention Visine. You no, know, you didn't. I mentioned I, I eye swear, drops, I think somebody. But I do have I a think... question about that. Yes. <laughs> oh, I have a question for you, but you go first. You go first. Well, I mean, every now and then I'll use Lumify. I know not to use it too much. I feel like you can get a rebound from it or things like that, right? Like Lumifly, you got dependent. Uh, Wait, what is that? So Lumify is um, it's low dose brimonidine, which is a glaucoma medication. Okay. But it also has a benefit of of right. blanching right. blood vessels. Right. Oh, okay. And so people use it for redness relief. If people are going to use a redness reliever, that's the one right. to use. But you don't want to overdo it, I feel like, because you can get that rebound that you can yes, get with a lot of Yes, you can still get other, a little right. rebound, but also you can develop an allergy to it. Oh, that wouldn't be good. Br then I wouldn't be Bramonidine go to use it, right? is one of the most common allergy inducing drops that we have. Now it's low dose, but still, if we if you develop an allergy to it, then you got to like stop using it completely. So that's why I tell people don't use it sparingly, right? Right. 
But visine, clear eyes, those are the redness relievers you stay away from because they're oh, very strong. They're actually that more tetra- so. I didn't realize that. I yeah. thought Lumify was like the strongest and that was the most dangerous, um, but actually stay away from clear eyes. That's interesting. Okay. Clear eyes, okay. yep. Uh, visine, those things, uh, the tetrahydrazoline, which mm-hmm. is the, the vasoconstrictor. Um, yeah, it, it causes much more issues with rebound hyperemia. So, so I, um, one time I was with a makeup artist doing some show and she had a bottle of toluidine blue, which is like a blue. blue. It's actually, I think it's toluidine blue. Maybe it was a different, but it's a blue dye that we, I recognize because we use it in dermatology to dye some cells. Sometimes when we do a stain, like we look Uh at something under the microscope. Uh And I was like, why do you have that on the table? And she said, we use it to to drop (gasps) in people's eyes because the blue like whitens the eye. Oh no. And I was Mm. like freaked out by that. I was like, that's like a chemical we use in the lab, like with the the pathology lab or or whatnot. But so you've not heard of that. that. Ophthalmologist approved? Uh, it's not an ophthalmologist to no, prove. No. Definitely not. People, uh, people put all kinds but of stuff in their eyes. I couldn't believe. I had to look up what that was. I, maybe I'm not saying it right that it was toluidine blue because I just remember it was blue. You know what? I think I actually like, have it after. I think I got some. It's like meth- I, methylene blue? Uh, no. I have to go to my, I see my bathroom. I feel like that's a different like, thing. I, I don't know. I don't think it's methylene blue though, but I think... I have it over there. I should, I'll, I'll have to send you. Crystal together. violet? That's the, <laughs> that's yeah. the uh, mm. gram stain thing. <laughs> Yes, but it's a blue, it's a dark blue dye that, you know, sometimes you know how we'll put that in our hair, like to color yeah. purple to co- offset if you color your hair. Anyway, right. but I, I was shocked to find her using something that yeah. I recognize as a lab dye, because um, I'm sure that also is not proof to put on your, in your, on what, your skin. Well, what's the, th- what's the thing for you in your world of, of skincare? What's the... Yeah, what do people put on their skin? What are that people doing that you're like, that's like Visine for me? What is it for you that's like you tell people to stop doing? Not using sunscreen, obviously. Um, right. I know there are things, but I triple I Triple antibiotics of, that, that you find? You know, I... I cringe a little bit at all the people that say, don't use Neosporin. Like all these people are like dermatologists and don't you, you know, cause it's like a shtick now. Like right. it's okay to use Neosporin if you're not allergic to it. Like, you know, it's not like it's going to kill you. you or something, but there's just a high, a higher percentage of people that are allergic to it. So mm-hmm. I don't know, that, that's not really what you're, the answer to your question, but I, I can't think of something right now off the top of my head, like something that I cringe about. I mean, uh, I mean that they're, I mean, that they're talking to me and they're like squeezing their pimples at the same time. That makes me cringe, <laughs> cringe. I'm like, stop picking. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not telling uh-huh. you, don't pick at your skin while I'm, especially when I'm talking to you, like I'm going to push your hand away, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, just something just like stop that. Doing yes. It. Like, let's not do that. Don't do that right now while I'm, you know. So if you were oh, doing you're talking to me and then you start going like this, I'd be like, ah, yeah. stop. Yeah. 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 Yes. That kind of thing. And this is making me like really feel like I need a skin check. I gotta I gotta oh. make an appointment. <laughs> I, I I just just talking about Why? dermatology okay. it makes me real I'm yes. I'm behind. You got uh, I Dr. mean you, well, you gotta that's... charge you extra. You got more surface area, I think. I, <laughs> that's right. I need a yeah. person. <laughs> He does. I, I need to. I need to make an appointment. All right, that's good. Yeah, yeah. come down and see. You us. also still need to see your eye doctor. Oh yeah, he's never had bad, an eye exam. Are you, are you a bad doctor? Never a patient yourself because I am. I'm too. not. Oh, I'm not worst. great. Yeah. I'm really I'm, bad. Are you yeah. like with me? Like I'm like tomorrow maybe I will be able to walk on that foot. I'll think it'll just get better. I know I can't put any weight on it today, but tomorrow it right. will be better. That's how, see, that's how I see. Am. That's the thing. Like. To, to to everybody else, to my patients, like I'm only an expert in eyeballs, but when it comes to my own body, I know everything about it. Um, yeah, really. And I'm I'm a specialist his in favorite, every organ system. <laughs> his favorite response is just, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, it usually is fine. But, you know, yes. except when it's not. Yeah. But anyway. Yes, um, he's the worst funny. patient. He's, yes. Oh, yes. my. Do you have a good answer? Cut out for me. I have a really good answer to when I see people out in public or a lot of times with my patients that I'd see like, oh, you're, you know, I'm your, do you, don't you like, they'll say, oh, you know, doctor, it's not glaucom fucking, it's Oh, they, rec- they recognize me. <laughs> oh, and they'll say like, uh, you know, yeah. hi, don't you recognize me? I saw your patient. I said, I mean, my, I don't know if you, uh, what you say, if you have an answer to that or anything, but I am always like, 
oh, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. You know, that kind of thing. I'm always like. That's a good one. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know if you guys do that. Well, most of my. Most of yeah. my patients, when it, by the time I walk into the room, their eyes are already dilated and they can't see anything. And so they really, all are the time you really they... tall too, so that it's like a noticeable. Oh, yes. uh, I, oh, okay. I am very tall. Yes, yes. I yes. sneak but, down in the corners and the crevices. I'm sure. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but but you probably do get noticed a lot just out and about, right? I mean, as I mean, I think well, a song on TV is gonna get noticed. Yeah, I mean, we get noticed for different. Like now, I get noticed not necessarily for being their doctor, but yes, but by being Doctor yeah. Pimple Popper. There was a time when I, before the television show, or when I was just starting, that I would get recognized a lot just because of my voice, which was very weird. Because <laughs> you would just hear my voice on my social media, you wouldn't really see me. So they didn't necessarily know, if, even if I was male or female. But well, they know, I guess, because they hear my voice being female. But like they would, uh, they would recognize me. Uh, they would actually hunt me down because of my voice. They would, then they would start to track me. Like I've been <laughs> right. discovered in airports. Like I heard your voice and I knew you were around here somewhere. So oh that's my gosh, a little that's kind of crazy. creepy. Yeah, I, I get <laughs> that happens to me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's. Because you you have all these videos and you're just narrating and talking. And for me, I'm talking to myself. Um, So, yeah, sometimes I I guess people just hear that. Are you ever included, Kristen, in his videos? Do you, like, play, like, the the I have played... (laughs) No. I have played the um, OBGYN. Oh. A couple times, yeah. Yeah. You make her yeah. the LGYN, huh? Okay. Yeah, yes. he was too scared to touch that one. Oh, oh, so. okay. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't know. I feel Literally, like, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I did. I don't know. I don't know. That's cool. It's, it was a good video, though. Yeah. I mean, people really liked it. So, well, what other doctors do you want to be? Do you want to be the dermatologist? Yeah, she yeah. would. She'd be good dermatologist, other than a pimple popping, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. right. That yes. is. Exactly. I'm, I'm pretty good at the skincare, but less so the procedures. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we better let Dr. Lee go. Yeah. You, speaking you got... of skincare, yes, tell exactly. us about your, your line. Oh, I, I have a skincare line called slmdskincare.com. And, I mean, it's at Billable. It's slmdskincare.com. Sorry about that. But it's called SMD Skincare because, and, and it's a medically based line. It's really about. And I think you probably had the same kind of thing. Like, what can you do with what you have, right, on social media and these people that that are following you and that are interested in your content? And I just realized I could reach people and really find, you know, the part of this is education and people understanding how to take care of their skin. But then on the other hand, also give them products that can help them with their acne, help them with their keratosis pilars, help them with um, uh, brown spots and things like that. So it's really about medically based. It's not like necessarily to just make your skin... I mean, it's going to make your skin feel good and look good, but we're not like highly anti-aging or in the, uh, cosmetic, you know, we're really trying to find people options so, because there's a lot of people who can't see a dermatologist, right? They can't right. see somebody and they need an answer and they think they know the answer themselves because they've watched the videos. They just need some something to use. So that's right. what we've, we've really and done. Can now. they find that on your website as well, drpimplepopper.com? Uh, yes, we have slmdskincare.com. That's our website for oh, okay. SLMD Skincare. Uh, gotcha. And But I'm sure you can find it at, you can find it at drpimplepopper.com. We're all sort of like connected, you know. Right, right. And your show is in its what season? Are you- we are in our, oh my gosh, what is the name? What would it be? Because I, they, we, I think it's like the eighth or the ninth season now. It's oh, wow. been that awesome. long. Yeah, we have had a lot of episodes. So, yeah. um, yes, it's That's great. Just, it's, I think we just finished our season. So, we might be raring up for a new one. So, check it well, out. Yes, on Congratulations right. on Thank all you. your success. Thank you, you, Thank you by the way, for just for being a positive influence in the like medical, uh, social media personality. I could say um, the same about you. So, it's the same thing. So, yes, yeah. we need to band together. There's, there's <laughs> only right. a few of us. Yes. <laughs> And we'll, we, we, we won't let arguments like uh, who owns Botox get in the way. Well, of, we already of... figured out what the answer is. <laughs> and you can come to my island any, anytime you want some fresh water. So come on. There you go. <laughs> Love it. All right. You can't come to mine. Yes. You'll let you go to hers, though. <laughs> well, thanks again for joining us. It really was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you for having me. Take care, guys. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of our favorite medical stories that were sent in by the listeners. Uh, This one uh, is anonymous. It says, hi there. 
my story happened a few years back. Somehow I got infected with bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus. That doesn't sound good. Staphylo- staph. Staph. Yeah. Staph infection. You don't want that. No. no. That's a bad there's one. There's different types of staph. There's like MRSA. Mm-hmm. And then there's regular staph. And anyway, lots of staph. Staph's everywhere. I had very painful pimples in certain areas like on my thighs. And unfortunately, around my intimate area. So I went to the doctor and they helped with the situation around my thighs. I didn't know how to ask them to help with the pimples elsewhere. Eventually, I mumbled about it and they checked. There was nothing, no pimple or anything. (laughs) Both male nurses were looking at me, at each other, in silence. Basically, I came across as a pervert trying to get some weird action. (laughs) Doesn't that always happen? Thank you very much for reading. Like, as soon as you... It's Call gone. an expert about something. Yeah, it's gone. exactly. But they I can take your car in, and I, they can't f- whoever, get it to do yeah. the thing. Whoever you are, though, I can reassure you that they, you did not come across that way. I we see that all the time. Exactly what Kristen just said. You know, it's it was there. It's gone now. It happens with eyes. Honestly, it, it we like that. It's great as a doctor for someone to come and be like, "Oh, I had this horrible thing that was going on. Now it's better." I'm like, awesome. I love it. <laughs> It makes my job easier because right. uh, it's reassuring to you and to me that there's nothing serious going on. So, right. yeah, I like it. Always better to get, you know, air on the side of caution, get it checked out. Yes, definitely. Uh, send us your stories, knock, knock, hi at human-content.com. Thank you for that one. Uh, and thank you for to Dr. Sandra Lee. Dr. Yes. Pimple Popple. Popper. Oh, Pimple. that's a Pimple tongue popple. twister. Remember Pimple what a popple? popple? I had popples. Remember popple? I still do have my popple. My mother what does it turn into? saved it. No, it like falls. Yeah, it turns into something. No, it just has like a little pouch. Okay, well, I had one that was like a the, the little animal, but then you turn it yeah. inside out. It's like a basketball. Oh no, mine was was all animal, well, but guess, it would it would be able to kind of like fold into I itself. I just maybe got the fancy type of popple <laughs> growing up. It's okay. Some of us had better childhoods than others. Uh, some of us had more money than others. So <laughs> shut up. <laughs> okay then. Well, um, it's uh, yeah, Dr. Sandra Lee. Of, of what a fantastic conversation. She's you know yes. just a. She's fun. She's so fun, and it really is cool what she's done. Um, with with her uh, her career and the education that she she gives to people and yeah I always like it when when MDs are on social media or you know wherever on TV wherever the people are and they're actually giving good advice because you know unfortunately there have been examples yeah. of physicians um, kind of compromising their their ethics in some ways yep. in the entertainment industry so it's always good to see people who are not doing that and are giving good information good education to the general public about their health and their bodies exactly and um and definitely you know check out her skincare line that was a uh, slmd skincare uh, also at dr pimple popper and at dr sandra lee on social media um let's see Anything else? Wrap up. What do you think about skin? Are you uh, you're 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 into it? You're into skin care. You yeah. You've, you've got a whole drawer full. You of got things. there's so much skin, like you said. You have to take good care of it, and it's your like first line of defense. I think I need you to like teach me. Well, I've tried. I don't. I don't. I just don't do it. I don't know. Yeah, I, might... I can't help you. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them a high sunscreen. <laughs> you haven't. You haven't led me anywhere. I, I, that's not true. You usually yeah, do. I was about to say. I usually do. <laughs> all right. Well, um, thank you all for listening. If you have any recommendations for any doctors or any healthcare professionals, or honestly, anybody even remotely around the healthcare system, we want to talk with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'd love that. Uh, there's lots of ways to hit us up. Email us, knock, knock, hi at human-content.com. You can visit us on any of the social media platforms. You can hang out with us and our human content podcast family on Instagram and TikTok at human content pods of uh, Instagram is really blowing up these days. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where I don't I mean, I don't know. I don't want to speak too soon, but I kind of feel like that's where uh, the medical community is migrating after the demise of Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still there, X, but yes. Yeah, yeah but I, I feel like that's where everybody's most active. I've really been enjoying seeing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm posting all these healthcare videos mm-hmm. uh, on to Instagram. And so it's fun seeing the reaction and, and kind of grow, growing that audience over there. So yeah, yeah check out uh, the Instagram. Uh, I'm, I'm at Doc Glock over yes, there, by the way. Yes, there's some impersonators, so don't fall for that. I got all kinds of impersonators, but yep, that's me, at Doc Glock. 
Uh, thanks to all the wonderful listeners of this podcast. I'll stop talking about my stupid social media platforms. Um, thanks to all the wonderful listeners leaving feedback and reviews. We love that. If you subscribe and comment on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube, we can give you a shout out uh, like today at SciCamel99 on YouTube said, you should make Ma Glockenflecken a regularly recurring guest. She's hilarious. A lot of fantastic feedback about Ma Glockenflecken on yes. the bonus episode we um, we put out recently. People love her. We knew they would. She, everyone loves Ma Glockenflecken. Can you, can you tell she has an accent, everybody? Because she can't. She, can, she, she doesn't realize. I but, know. Uh, but she, she did an awesome job, and we're definitely going to have her back. Really? Yeah. Every time she visits... Probably. We'll, yeah, we'll we record that. a little something. She's she's a good reactor too. Maybe we should do some reaction videos with her. Oh, she's yeah. very enthusiastic. That's true. She has it's got a big personality and mm -hmm. she's gonna love hearing this. She's probably I'm sure she's listening to oh, it. Oh yeah. So hi mom. <laughs> <laughs> Call your mother. Uh full video episodes of this podcast are up every week on YouTube at D Glock and Flecken. Uh, we also have a Patreon, lots of cool perks, bonus episodes, where we react to medical shows and movies, uh, hang out with other members of the Knock Knock High community. We're there, we're talking, we're active. Early ad-free episode access, interactive Q&A live stream events, uh, a lot more. Check it out, patreon.com slash glockenflecken, or go to glockenflecken.com. Speaking of Patreon community perks, new member shout out to Catherine E., Charles K., Kipton L., Keith G., and Doug M., Welcome, everybody. It's Hello. so good to have you. Also, as always, shout out to the Jonathans. Patrick, Lucia C., Sharon S., Omar, Edward K., Stephen G., Jonathan F., Marion W., Mr. Granddaddy, Caitlin C., Brianna L., Dr. J., Chaver W., Leah D., K. L., Rachel L., and P. and Keith G., a virtual head nod to you all. Patreon roulette, random shout out to an emergency medicine tier patron. Shout out to Dan for being a patron. Dan, thank you. All right. Hope you're having a good day. Hope all of you are having a good day. Thank you all for listening. We're your hosts, Will and Kristen Flannery, also known as the Glock and Plugins. Special thanks to our guest, Dr. Sandra Lee, Dr. Pimple Popper. Our executive producers are Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery, Aaron Corney, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brooke. Our editor engineer, Jason Portizo. Our music is by Omar Benz V. To learn about our Knock Knock Highs program disclaimer, ethics policy, submission verification, licensing terms, and HIPAA release terms, you can go to glockandflecken.com. Lots of people are going there for that, by the way. A lot, getting <laughs> it's a our lot most of hits. heavily trafficked part of our website. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, people say we want more program disclaimers. We want more about this ethics policy you keep talking about. Please give us more. We're on it. We'll be producing that content shortly. You can go to glockandflecken.com or reach out to us, knockknockhigh at human-content.com with any questions, concerns, or fun medical puns. Knock Knock High is a human content production. Goodbye. Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcasts or join the party over on Patreon where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think.